Hi, this is Jonathan Marks, and I'm here today with Dr. Stephen Ferrone, who's a distinguished professor of psychiatry at SUNY Upstate Medical University, and is also on the board of APSARD, the American Professional Society of ADHD and Related Disorders. At this January 2016 meeting of APSARD, he's going to be talking about the developmental trajectory of ADHD from longitudinal studies. Steve, can you tell us more what that's going to be about? Sure. Uh, recently, there's been a lot of interest in adult ADHD from a study that was published in the American Journal of Psychiatry that drew some conclusions about the disorder, suggesting that there may be an adult onset form of the disorder that could be a valid form that clinicians might need to treat and worry about. So at APSTAR, we decided we ought to have a symposium because this is a very controversial and a clinically important issue. Uh, at the symposium, there'll be a number of us speaking on the topic based on data that we have. We encourage database talks at APSTAR, so we speak from facts, not from opinions. I'll be talking about the aged onset criterion in DSM-5. As many people know, the aged onset criterion for ADHD has been 7, and then in the new diagnostic manual, it changes to 12, based upon research by myself and other people. And in the work I'm going to present, I ask the question, is this aged onset of 12 a valid aged onset? What happens if the disorder onsets later in adolescence or in early adulthood? And to look at that, I present data from family study of adults with ADHD, so we have very interesting data on functional outcomes and family history on people that, have, that appear to have a late onset form of the disorder. Great. And this whole idea of, of, of picking a particular date at which the onset, what's the significance of that, 7 versus 12 versus 14? Why define that at all? That's a great question. It was originally defined in uh, DSM-3 because the diagnostic committee all agreed that ADHD was a childhood disorder mm -hmm. and thought that neither an aged onset in childhood. Subsequently, some of us thought it was sort of arbitrary to say age 7 is the right age at onset. And we tested that and we found that it really wasn't valid, that later onsets were, were, in, were indeed valid. What happens with onsets later in life, and in the DSM-5 the DSM committee recognized that there's some arbitrariness to choosing 12, say, versus 13. Obviously, there's no, there's no switch in the brain that turns on or off at 12 or 13 that mm -hmm. says you can't have ADHD anymore. But what the committee knew was that there really weren't, wasn't any data about onset that occurred later, so they didn't want to define a diagnosis without having appropriate data, number one. And then number two, they were worried that as onset became later and later, given the lack of data, you start to get more false positive diagnoses. But that's the kind of issue we'll be discussing in this symposium to help clinicians understand the intricacies and the subtleties in dealing with parents what, what appear to be late onset forms of the disorder. Great. So this is going to be a very interesting symposium. This is at upcoming APSARD meeting in January 15th to 17th in Washington, D.C. at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. Thanks, Steve, for talking with us. We'll see you there.